Hi, everybody. I am Megan Thompson with Megan Thompson Coaching, and I am getting on a little bit early because it looked like I'm having a little technical issue with one of the um, programs that I'm using, and I'm I'm on live, but I'm not um, live in the actual video that I had set up prior to that. So I'm um, just going to type um, a little thing to make sure people who are, who wanted reminders are going to get that. So I wanted to be here while I'm doing that. Just going to stick that link. The Cambridge Analytica, um, stuff has really jacked up how I can broadcast with you guys. <laughs> so, apologize for that. Let me see. I'm with Megan Thompson Coaching, and I am getting on a little bit early. The Cambridge well, I'll link it, link it to the people um, who wanted to see it after, because... That's silly for you to have to watch me do that. So I wanted to talk today a lot about how natural consequences can be effective and how if they're um, not working for you, that you're in the right place. Um, one of the things that I often hear from parents is that, um, well, you can get two... There's many kinds of highly sensitive kids, but there's one one end of the spectrum or the other, right? So you can have a highly sensitive child who's big on rule following and really focuses on the rules and virtually does nothing wrong. Uh, perfect little angel at home, but just frozen in other situations because always stuck on wanting to get what's um, get it right. And then we have other HSCs who really struggle with following directions and are what one might consider strong-willed. Um, so this video is for you. If you perceive your child or, or just see your, your kiddo as a big rule follower and, and um, is able to kind of take your direction pretty effectively, but you're struggling more with helping them manage their big emotions, stay tuned. I'll go live about something else um, about that later um, in the next couple of weeks. And um, But this video is definitely for you if you feel like you're implementing natural consequences and you are lost as to why your kiddo is just not responding to them. So I see somebody's watching. Let me know that you're here. Um, drop an emoji or say hi. Um, that part of the tech is working today. Um, but I wanted to really go into this more deeply. So first we need to kind of talk about what is the concept of a natural consequence. This The, the development for this is, is to um, teach... Uh, cause and effect. If you do this, then this happens. So natural consequences as opposed to punishment, which is what I was talking about last week, is that um, you're teaching your child that, that a direct result happens from their misbehavior or their inability to comply, rather than taking away an iPad when they're refusing to brush their teeth um, and they were currently watching a TV show. Um, on the on the television, so more natural consequence would be well, you know, you lose the television rather than their like special, more special toy that they really love. So it's punishment if you're engaging in shame based um, ways to teach your child, because again, discipline is uh, derived from the word disciple. It is to teach, um, and so when we punish, we create shame. And so we went over that last week. Um, but this week we're really focusing on, okay, if, you know, you don't perceive yourself to be a shame-based parent, you're, um, you really work, work on not, you know, trying not to yell, or um, when you do, you feel really crappy about it, um, you're definitely not a spanker, um, and you're still struggling to wrap your head around this whole piece about natural consequences, because in the back of your mind, or you hear grandma and grandpa saying, like, your kid just needs a good whack. And that is not the way you want a parent. And so it leaves you feeling stuck and lost and just hopeless at times. And so I'm hoping that this video helps you feel more focused on what the solution will be for you. 
All right, so the next thing that we're going to be going over is that um, natural consequences is really just one piece of the puzzle. If we're thinking about parenting your kiddo um, in, in addressing the struggles that they're having as a highly sensitive child, natural consequences, when I work with parents directly in my course or in private practice, is really not the first focus that we address um, because there are lots more issues that need to be addressed first, um, like the quality of your relationship based on how your communication style is going and um, managing how you're validating your child in that moment when they're refusing um, and helping set the tone and the routine in the household. So I have to put that caveat on there because I don't want you guys to feel like my videos are solutions to the problems that you're having in full. Um, it's really important for you to, to recognize that I'm giving like tidbits to help you along the way, but if you're still feeling lost, it doesn't mean that these tidbits aren't working, it's that you need more support. And I have to be blunt about that because that's just my personality. But um, it's important for you to recognize that with natural consequences only being one piece of the puzzle, parents kind of have to really change their approach the whole way that you relate to your highly sensitive child, which is tricky, especially if you have multiple kids or multiple highly sensitive kids. So we're kind of going on and on about that. But the next piece is important to recognize is that you need to help your child learn what to do. Um, so I went over a little bit about that last week with the punishment issue, that punishment really doesn't teach your child what to do. Um, it only helps your child realize what not to do and how to keep you from noticing it when they do do it. So with natural, natural consequences, what I really like to focus on with parents, one of the parts that we talk, that we talk a lot about, is how is their um, interaction with you, their refusal to perform in whatever way that you need them to do in that moment, how is that impacting the relationship? And maybe that's where the natural consequence needs to come about, rather than focusing on losing items because they happen to be um, doing some fun thing for them. Um, and so, like, they're playing Barbies and they are refusing to brush their teeth. And so you're like, all right, that's it. No more Barbies for tonight. Um, maybe that's not the natural consequence that's going to work for your child in that moment that really teaches them they can't yell at you when it's bedtime. Um, but that's not how we behave in a family. So... With that said, it's important to recognize that you're not um, conveying that message, like this is not how that works, which is, uh, I'm quoting Olivia, who asked for help in that, in that moment. I want you to recognize that when your child is refusing or confused or struggling in that moment, that is not the time to teach them about how their behavior impacts other people, about how their behavior impacts you. Um, after the fact is really the important piece. So... Um, we get into that more effectively when you work with me directly. But the, that's a, one of the big things that I notice with parents is that teachable moment is um, viewed as like in the moment when your child is struggling to comply. And that's not the case. It really needs to be done in a separate time. So we're moving on next to um, helping your child learn what to do. And that really takes practice um, and specific ways to practice so that your child doesn't feel con like you're condescending them or like te treating them like a baby. Um, really, they need more help practicing when there's something they want to do and they can't do it. That's the validation piece that we're trying to recognize. They're struggling in that moment with that emotion of disappointment. And they need to learn how to figure out how to do it differently. Even though they're disappointed, they still need to comply to you. It's still bedtime. Um, also, it's important for you to recognize that it's not as understood or implied as you think it is. Again, when we notice in the brain scans that your highly sensitive people use more brain power every day, it's, it, it's clear and, and more obvious that they can be more overwhelmed by that. And so they can miss, up, miss um, some social cues or pick up um, and struggle to put them in place when... Um, when you think that the message is implied. Um, because HSPs and HSCs brains are wired to be on overdrive a lot of the time. And so it's really important to recognize that they can struggle to put all the pieces together on um, implied compliance. So up front, in order to get um, 
more significant change, you might need to, or you'll need to be focusing on more specific ways to teach your child how to comply. All right. And then lastly, um, what does work is a specific plan to help your child avoid the overwhelm while learning those new tasks. So one of the things that I see a lot with parents and with kids and even when I'm working with kids in my private practice is that it's a, even a huge struggle to just talk about the fact that their behavior needs to change or that things need to be working differently because they're so all consumed by the shame of the fact that they are not getting it right or not perfect or just not performing effectively at home. Um, and so that piece really plays into the concept of talking to your kiddo about what needs to happen differently at home and they can avoid or decline or feel ashamed to the point where you don't even get end up having the conversation because it leads to a meltdown or they become obstinate or you're you're really um, struggling to get them to comply and so then you end up like getting super frustrated and saying like I'm the boss or it, it, maybe not in those words, but that's what you want to say. Um, or it slips out, you know, who knows what's going on when you're super frustrated that it makes sense that, that things are um, things are happening at that point. And so it's really um, quite a challenge for parents and to help kids when they're overwhelmed to learn those new strategies and to put in place, like, the recognition that we speak in a respectful tone and... Um, we, you know, follow a routine, all of these things that are, you know, the goals that you want for your child to develop need to be taught um, in a way that's specific to your child, but also in a way that helps them feel like they are supported, there's nothing wrong with them, they're not broken, um, and that sense of, like, listen to me because I said so, or, um, and like Olivia was saying, she kind of like gets into this point of, you know, if, if I'm kind of presuming based on what she was talking about, like child says, no, we need to do this, that, and the third before I go brush my teeth or no, mommy, like you need to go, um, play with me or I need to go do this. So when a child is immediately saying no, um, it makes perfect sense that you're like, what do you mean? No, <laughs> I'm like it's bedtime. I don't want to hear it. Like we need to go brush our teeth or you need to go brush your teeth. Um, so Olivia, I feel you on that, that you're struggling with maintaining a cool, even head at that point. Um, when your daughter is, is, um, is struggling to comply and it makes, it makes sense. And the, the thing that I really want to convey to parents is that there are ways to teach your child um, how to do this piecemeal versus like just expecting compliance because your child is old enough to to know how to brush her teeth. Even if your child isn't old enough to know how to brush her teeth, she might not be old enough to um, stop something that she's enjoying and leave it to go do something that she doesn't enjoy or that is mundane. Um, she might also not have all of the skills to calm down that disappointment and then move to the task. So I want you to re review whether you're viewing your child's um, word no as obstinance or if it's just if you can restructure it to perceive your child as struggling to comply. Um, even just the language, I've, I've said this before, semantics are key in parenting highly sensitive kids. If we can look at it from a different angle and target it specifically, then we can definitely help you work towards having more peace in your home with managing everyday routines and getting your kiddo to comply on a regular basis with typical directions. So if this scene sounds like you and you're really struggling and you would like more support on that, let's chat. I'm going to put a um, link in the bottom to set up a call. We'll talk about what, how I can support you and your specific um, family's needs on that. Um, Amy, I know that you had asked for um, how, how to come up with natural consequences on the fly and um, again, I have to say that slowing down and modeling for your child that you haven't quite made the right decision yet will be more effective than trying to have like a step-by-step, -step, like if my child quits when, you know, refuses when watching TV, then they lose TV. Like, um, 
learning what you've learned with me and, and kind of putting that into practice will be more effective and saying, you know, look, I don't like the way that this is working out and I need to think about what I'm going to do about it next. And then being able to come back after you put some of this stuff in place. Because for me, I rattle it off based on my knowledge and the fact that I've been speaking the HSC language for almost a decade. And for parents, it's you're learning a new foreign language and it's going to take some time. So for me to kind of give you like a rattle off list um, without specifically working with your family, then it's it, it could be that you're... That, that won't be successful. So I don't want to give that out um, in that way. But Amy, you and I will will discuss that um, when we when we talk next. Okay, that's it. I want to see if um, I know somebody else is watching. Let me check. So apparently I can see the likes, but I can't see um, the the faces here. So let me see if I. Oh, uh, Beth. Hi, hi, Beth. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. Um, any questions for you, Beth? And then if anybody else has questions when they're watching the replay, let me know. Um, and like I said, I'm going to jump in to the... Um, oh, I just saw a picture of my cousin's newborns, the first uh, social media post, so I'm a little <laughs> distracted by that. Um, but anyways, so she... Um, uh, I'll put the link to, to get in touch with me, and then we will... Um, We'll chat about how to help that, you know, and rattle off those those responses to make it more effective for your specific family's needs. Okay? Let's see if anybody has questions related to me going live yet. Nope, just see Beth watching. Saying hi. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it for us today. And, um let's let's talk and get on a call to get more specific about what would be helpful for your child. Thanks and have a nice weekend.